I think that we are in a wonderful time for do to do audio branding because this this that this situation where we need to educate people it's a very good situation right because it's something that is happening that we need to be strategic about it and not so many brands are doing it right so i think it's a, it's a great place to be Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. Sound plays a more important role in human behavior and our decision-making than you may realize. In this podcast, I'll help you understand the art and science of sound so you can better influence others in business and your life. I'm your host, Jody Krangle. Let's delve a little deeper. Here's the first part of my interview with Drop Music Branding. My next guests, yes, there are three of them, have known each other their whole lives. Two of them were classmates in elementary school in their hometown of Patagonia. And when they moved to Buenos Aires to go to music college, they met their third. Since then, they've been classmates, bandmates, roommates, and eventually partners in drop music branding. They are, and I'm probably going to butcher this, but I'll do my best, Gabriel Evuedo, Delmiro Acasi, and Mualo Gonzalez and they've conveniently given me nicknames that they go by, Gabo, Dal, and Mao. In 2009, Dal moved to Boston to major in performance at Berkeley, and Gabo worked at Argentina's main TV station while Mao worked at Disney. When Dal came back from Boston, the three of them began creating audio identities for brands on four continents, and have been doing that for more than a decade now. I'm really looking forward to hearing their perspectives on innovations within the audio branding industry as well as where they think things are heading into the future. As always, if you have questions for my guests, you're welcome to reach out through the links in the show notes. And if you have questions for me, visit audiobrandingpodcast.com, where you'll find a lot of ways to get in touch. Plus, subscribing to the newsletter will let you know when the new podcasts are available. And if you'd consider it, I'd love to hear what you think of the podcast. You can leave a review that I'd love to feature on future podcasts, either in written or in voice format from the podcast's main page. And now, here's my interview with Drop Music Branding. Thanks so much, guys, for taking the time to talk with me today. I really appreciate your being here. Hey, Jody, thank you for having us. Uh, we're really happy to be here and, and doing this episode. So thanks. Thanks for the invitation. We're so pleased. Yeah, thank you very much for having us, Jody. Thanks so much. I want to start off by asking you if you have an early memory of how sound moved you. And I mean, all three of you can answer, but I, you know, whoever wants to start, go for it. <laughs> okay, okay. Do you guys want me yeah. to take the lead? I yes, please. Okay, okay. I my earliest memory of listening to music uh, or or being interested in playing comes from my brother. I have like a, a an older brother that is five years older than me. Uh, it's, he's called Andres. So if he's listening to this, it's you. Uh, you are the the guilty one. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I he you know teenage stuff. He tried to uh, he wanted to play guitar, and I'm we were two brothers. So he said, "Okay, I'm playing guitar. So you are on the drums." <laughs> and that's kind of it's where I realized that I could play music. You know. So this was this was uh, ten, you know, at the age of ten. That was the beginning of everything. That it was like a calling, you know. It's from that point, I understood that my that my calling in life was to do music and 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 make a living out of it. You know, it's like I'm going to be a musician. There's no doubt about it. I didn't have to do the test where you know they test you what career would be better for you at senior year it was like i already know i'm some from since then right <laughs> uh for me my, my mother used to have an old an old box full of cassette tapes and a little plate uh, a player and a recorder and i remember just listening to her mixtapes and recording on top of it and recording my own songs and having like a radio show and this probably was like since i was i have memories of five six years old 
And then uh, in high school, when Gabo started playing drums, uh, <laughs> he needed a guitar player because uh, his brother was moving to Buenos Aires. So I started playing guitar. <laughs> <laughs> it, it moved on. Yeah. <laughs> So you guys have known each other a long time. <laughs> yeah, these yeah. two most. Yeah. But uh, I get to know him uh, uh, in 2003. So we all know each other from a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. So Mal, what about you? I was going to do that, not to music, but to sound. Yeah. And I remember as a kid, as a very young kid, words and names and, and the words and speech had so much. Uh, they told me it's like the word and this had its meaning, but the sound told me an another thing. Maybe it was a smell, maybe it was a texture, maybe it was a taste. So I remember from very, very uh, early stages, like this synesthetics uh, going through my brain, which <laughs> are maybe <laughs> that's the start of, or the beginning of what we do right now, which is the opposite, is thinking of a texture and putting it into sound. So uh, that was my first, uh, relation with sound with as a kid yes that's great yeah then with music because my dad was a musician oh okay yes but the first thing that I can I can remember is that <laughs> <laughs> that's, he's the crazy one <laughs> <laughs> sound yeah. not music yeah, yeah yeah I'm just joking I'm so joking that's great man having that early memory it's amazing Yeah, I, I want to ask you how you got into the whole audio brand side of things, because I know that you guys have known each other a long time, but, uh, you know, there's a, there, there's a sequence of events that went from making the music to making, you know, what, what you guys do right now. So how did that happen? Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy story because none of us, it's like, as you said, it's a sequence of events that leads you to this point you know it's life itself um it has a lot to do with what we just uh, told you because that calling on our on ourselves made us uh, go to well from that with that we are from patagonia so we moved to buenos aires when we finished high school to study music because we wanted to work and be professional musicians right which is uh, you uh, from all the people know that it's you're against the world, basically. <laughs> it's hard. It's, yeah. We musicians are born with such an entrepreneurial uh, mind, you know, it's like immediately you understand that you are going to play music and you need people to go to watch your show. And that's when your mind blows because... Your aunt doesn't go to anymore, <laughs> doesn't go anymore because she went three times already. So you, it was like, okay, we need to do something about it. And that uh, took, you, took us from playing what we want, you know, as an expression of art. But we also thought on our professional side. So at I think it was 2011, we've already finished uh, college and we came, uh, stumbled upon the opportunity to create music for the main TV station here in Argentina, which was a crazy opportunity, you know. That was like uh, something that, that lucky moment, you know, in the life. And we were here with Mauro and jumped on the opportunity because mm -hmm. that was studying in, in Boston. In, in Berkeley, right? Yep. So we just jumped on the opportunity and didn't know that we could actually do it. You know, yeah. we needed to create the audio branding for the main TV station. <laughs> the it funny was crazy. thing was that we didn't have like tools and VSTs and instruments. We were like, we have the a Windows computer with some cracked software and it was like, how do we do <laughs> this? It was, yeah, we got it. But then it was like, Okay, okay, now we, we need to do it in a week. <laughs> now what do you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was hard. It was My hard. goodness. It was yeah. absolutely. So, But you need to take the chance. It's so important. Yeah, and you need to get out of your comfort zone. And when something, you know, something is, when you realize you have an opportunity, you know, uh, before you, it's always, I, I think it's not an opportunity if you know how to do it, right? It needs to take you out of your comfort zone. It needs to be a challenge. 
and we took it and it went, went amazing. We are still doing the music for that TV station. 10 years. 10 years. Still? Yes. Yes. Right. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> continue. Yeah. That's fantastic. We, we did invest in software and, and tools and, yes. <laughs> and computers. You're worried about the crack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah, what now you're doing now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Although we are we are still looking for this uh thing that put us out of the comfort zone constantly. So we basically I'm going to go through the story really fast because we hanged up on the on the philosophy of how we think. Go so for it. we did that music for this TV station and a lot of years passed by without realizing we were actually doing audio branding. Until um, in 2018, we were commissioned by Future Brand, which is a, a global branding agency to create a, the new audio logo for, um, for a TV satellite operator that works in, in the whole South America uh, and, and Central America. It's like Spanish-speaking America. So... That's when Mauro here came with a Gary B article and told me, hey, look, audio branding is something. <laughs> it's like something big, right? Yeah. I saw that article too. So I, I read yeah, that article. It's a good article. And, yes, absolutely. It changed our lives. Literally, you know? yeah. Because uh, since then, I we went mental. You know, it's like we went bananas and I read every bra audio branding book that there is. <laughs> And I learned a lot of branding strategy because, you know, it's a, a, a link in the chain, right? So we, I used to work in this TV station as well as a producer. So I realized that I was the coordinator of the motion graphic department, right? So I realized that I knew how designers work, which is the m most people in branding are come from a visual design background, right? So I understood their workflow and we kind of created a system to work with them that uh, we fit seamlessly. So we are three persons that are doing audio branding for a long, long time and, and specialized on, on creating unique audio identities for brands. Mm -hmm. I just want to add that uh, we were really lucky to start working uh, alongside Image. And that was like the bridge. Like from the day one on this TV channel was everything against an image. Everything mm -hmm. against an animation. Yeah. And, and that gave us a lot of practice. Yeah, and also, also we, we, now we know that the uh, most fun part is to match the image with, the, with audio. And bringing that images or maybe videos to life is the fun part. I know we're all dealing with a lot these days, so I really wanted to acknowledge those that have gone out of their way to leave an honest review of this podcast. Audio Lover 1429 writes, Great audio about audio. What's not to like? Jody takes her listeners on a journey exploring the art and science of audio, great stories, and some deep insights into why audio is so hot today. Beautifully produced, and Jody makes it fun. I appreciate your appreciation, Audio Lover. I'm glad you learned something by listening. Thanks so much for your review. And now back to the show. I wanted to ask you along those lines, if there's a difference you think between audio branding and sonic branding, because people use both terms sometimes interchangeably. I'm wondering if you have a preference for which one you, you, you like to use or if you think they mean different things. Can I say the short answer first and then you go, Gabo? Go for it. Okay, short answer is the same. Okay, now you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like an interaction. Yeah. The, the first five seconds. Even if YouTube you need video. to skip, skip like 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> you are mean, man. Come on. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, to answer your question, we actually have came, came up with a, an Instagram post about it. So I... I studied a little bit why is there a difference and it's basically the same as Mauro said the difference is uh, sound is you know the definition of sound is the movements of air particles through a medium that 
you know, produces sound waves. And the audio is the same, but uh, processed and, and played, replayed by, by a speaker. So it's actually the same definition. The difference would be, I don't know, like somebody says a name of a brand, you know, word to mouth, right? Mouth to word, right? How is the expression? It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's so, been... Oh, word um, of mouth. <laughs> word of mouth. That's word. right. So the, the difference is I found the difference between who referred as doing sonic branding and who referred as audio branding. And it's sonic branding is a little bit more corporate and, and, you know, uh, for older people, you know, C CEOs, CMOs, CBOs, and audio branding is a little bit more uh, younger and hip and cool. So basically think, that's the difference. I think when I search uh, on, on Google, audio branding gave me more Spanish uh, results and Sonic branding was my more like English spe speaking uh, results. I don't know that maybe that's something. Uh, yeah, yeah, everything is something, you know. Yeah, there's, it's, 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 it's maybe. There's there's a there's key no. difference when you add the, the word branding. Of course, you you brought you bring into this medium, but the the key difference between audio and sound is like sound. It's found uh, on the nature, like animals, plants, winds. Uh, that's all sound, and audio refers uh, kind of specifically of sound being reproduced through a human-man device, a speaker, uh, uh, maybe um, an acoustic guitar. But an acoustic guitar also has properties of sound, but it's also a man-made instrument, so it's kind of. I uh, think it's speaker, and that's it. Yeah. it's. I think it's like yeah. a process. It's not, there's no oh. other option, you know, because if the guitar is sounding. Acoustically, acoustically, mechanically, naturally. Right. Yeah. naturally. Okay. Well, so that's yeah. the difference. <laughs> I see. Okay. So I chose the right name for my podcast. <laughs> If you're a cool kid. <laughs> Because it's audio branding. <laughs> Absolutely. I like that. Okay. Yes. Well, we actually choose to say audio branding as well. Uh, so yeah, the audio branding theme. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, sure. Uh, so just to get down to, you know, the basics here of how you relate with a company in regards to this, how do you convince a company that they need it in the first place? Because I'll, I'll bet there's a, a bit of convincing that you need to do because not a lot of companies really understand what this is. It's getting better. Certainly there's a lot more out there now than there used to be. <laughs> But how do you convince a company that they need this for their brand? Everybody's already doing it. It just depends if you put the strategy behind it or you just <laughs> let it to random chance of an editor or anybody oh, that point. can get their hands on the final video or, or even a spot, an advertisement. Yeah, it, it happens whether you like it or not, you know. And the thing is, like Dal said, it being strategic about it. Besides, I, I don't think I'm the one that is more on the commercial side of the three of us, which means that I am the one that is convincing, right? <laughs> But I, I don't like to think of that, of it like that, you know, because I, sales is not about convincing anybody, just maybe educating and solving problems, right? Yeah, so, we, we like uh, to think that we present an opportunity. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's Sure. Maybe we use our our social medias to educate you know our brand voice is a lot of things that are beneficial and, and that kind of sort of stuff but when usually when we work with a the brand they already they already appreciate our work you know yeah but the the key word was educating because you you say audio branding to somebody randomly and they will go like what audio what So you need yeah, to, yeah. when they know what it is and what we do, they know that they need it. So there's no need to sell it. You just need to tell me what you, what right, you do. Right, right. I, I think that we're in a wonderful time for do, to do audio branding because this, this, that, this situation where we need to educate people, it's a very good situation, right? Because... It's something that is happening that we need to be strategic about it and not so many brands are doing it, right? 
So I think it's a, it's a great place to be. Are you looking for ways to improve your company's or podcast's impact? You'd be surprised how powerful the use of an intentional audio branding strategy can be. Want to know more? I have a free downloadable PDF that gives you my five tips for implementing an intentional audio strategy at voiceoversandvocals.com slash audio dash branding dash strategy. That location does ask to put you on a mailing list just to send you updates on when the new podcasts come out. But if you really don't want to give your email out, I understand. Just contact me directly. My email is all over my website and I'll make sure you get that PDF without needing to sign up anywhere. If you do sign up, though, you also get access to a resources section called The Studio, where I have videos, white papers and PDFs, discounts from my guests, and snippets of audio from my guests that no one else gets to hear. So maybe it's worth your while. Totally up to you. And of course, if you're looking for voiceovers, you can get in touch with me about that, too. Now, back to the podcast. When someone comes to you and they've decided that they want an audio brand, what, what's the process that you take them through in order to get them something they can use? Okay, I'm not going to give you the keys of my house, but... <laughs> no, no, you don't have to. I'm just, in general... No, I know, I know. I <laughs> what know. do you I, ask in them? General, what kind of questions? We, yeah. Well, for me, the idea of audio branding and creating an identity for a brand, it has more to do with design and, and design thinking, I mean, than a, a personal expression. Although it, it, it always going to be an interpretation of concepts made that we do as humans, right? There's some bias always, uh, but we tend to do workshops and 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 market research of course because you don't want to do what the competition is doing of, of course we there are there are some stages that are rational but there's always an arg and a why behind our decisions oh, and when it comes to music composition right guys do you want to take it from here yeah, we try to make a, a be the most objective decision that you can possibly make it's really hard sometimes because uh, you might you might find yourself uh, dealing with a client that wants to it's music no so everybody has an opinion of it everybody listens to music so it's sometimes you get to a, to somebody that you need to convince on their music taste what's good for the product and and that's why we we tend to have a decision behind every and we have an explanation behind every decision that we make educate not convince <laughs> ah, i'm just joking i'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> i mean it is subjective and there's convincing, but if if there's an argument why you did this, because I, I don't, I'm, I'm going to be a little, and give an example of something a little bit over the top, but if you are, a, I don't know, yoga instructor and you like heavy metal, which is amazing, but you are not going to have a, a yoga theme with a heavy metal style, right? And of course, it's an absurd situation, but it could happen. <laughs> so that's when we need to educate the client and, and understand to for them to trust in us that we are the experts, right? So, yeah. What so. what happened also with music is that it's not rocket science. You know, everybody knows about music, and everybody, everybody thinks that they know a lot about maybe about music because it's a part of everyone. So it, it it depends on the client, but it can get, you know, it gets rocky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, having an argument with somebody that don't have the language or the terms right, it's kind of frustrating. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes I, I I think that we also made some personal brands, you know, through the pandemic, which is, uh, of course, there are, there are, there are projects that are a lot smaller, but they are great because you you come you it's like the most subjective uh, project ever. You know you need to represent a a person with your music. You got like one track to condense that person, which is really hard to do. And, and if there's convincing, mm -hmm. it's on that place, right? <laughs> and 
we've we've <laughs> loved it. Sense, you know, yes. yeah, yeah. We we've nailed it every time, and that person, that client, ends up with something that makes him so happy. You know, which is great. I I think that that's those are nice projects. Yeah, and they give us uh, room to play a little bit, a little bit more, because uh, you get to be a little bit more bold depending on the brand, but uh, it gives you more room and it's, they're, they're fun. Yeah. So how do you know that you got it right? I mean, yes, the client is happy, but what's the end result of some of this? I mean, do they actually see an uptick in their business? Well, yeah, absolutely. I, I think that um, you, in, in personal brands, of course, it depends on the client like in it, but I, I think that you you know you've done it right when it's actually applied for a long time you know when when you see the client using it and and using it and really implementing it well that's when you did it right because the education doesn't end when the with the with the final delivery on our side you know we need we need that this we need this to work right So if you see it and you watch it and, and people, then you cross the street and somebody is singing some part of something that came out of your mind, okay, that worked. So, yeah. That must be a real high, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yes. This has been part one of our interview. I hope you'll tune in next week for part two. Well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available in all the usual locations. Until next time. <laughs>